population of the United States contributes roughly 5% to the world's total population, yet we account more than 25% of the world's incarcerated individuals. Our correctional system has seen a 700% increase in population since the 1970s and has risen out of control due in large part to our country's failed war on drugs. I have conducted extensive research on marijuana and believe that decriminalization of the drug is the only viable solution to this growing problem in our country. A theory has become widely adopted that when attempting to gather insight into future events, the best place to look is at what the past has taught us. Much like the failed prohibition of alcohol that lasted from 1920 to 1933, the present prohibition of marijuana possession and consumption is an attempt to legislate morality. Even though opponents of decriminalization cite potential for decreased availability and abuse of drugs as premises to maintain the legal status quo, history has taught us that we should suspect otherwise. The federal government of the United States as well as many state governments have displayed through a sustained effort to perpetuate the war on drugs their belief that criminalization yields decreased availability and abuse of marijuana. However, many people, including former Attorney General Janet Reno, acknowledge that the war on drugs has been a complete failure. Previous research has shown that drug use is independent of the type of drug policy imposed by a government. In a study comparing marijuana use in Amsterdam, an advocate for decriminalization, and San Francisco, at the time, an advocate for criminalization, Researchers found no significant difference in the age of onset, frequency and quantity of use over time, and career use patterns of marijuana users from each city. The empirical evidence provided in this study illustrates that criminalization is not a deterrent, nor is decriminalization a catalyst for marijuana abuse. Despite this evidence, the United States federal marijuana policy has become increasingly restrictive and punitive. While it is impossible to determine whether decriminalization will increase the supply of marijuana in the United States, conventional wisdom and a simple lesson of economics would support the claim that supply would be in direct correlation to demand. Our focus should be on the demand rather than the supply. Simply reducing the supply of a resource that needs only a little soil, water, and ultraviolet radiation to be reproduced would merely be treating the problem, not curing it. They took our pot. What shall we ever do? I know. We'll just grow some more. Attempting to control the supply of marijuana is like wrapping a bandage around a torn ACL. Here we would be treating the problem with the bandage rather than curing it with the required surgery needed to properly repair the injury. What we need to be on, focused on, if in fact marijuana is truly a problem in need of curing, is the demand for the drug education on potential side effects, risk of dependency, and addiction to marijuana should be of the utmost concern to our government if they are attempting to reduce demand. And why stop there? Why not get to the heart of why abusers of marijuana feel the need to alter their perception in the first place? Maybe we could delve into some societal issues that would lead so many people to want to escape their own realities. To reiterate, we need a cure not a temporary fix if marijuana is truly a problem worth waging war upon. Treatment for those suffering from addiction rather than incarceration would also reduce the demand for drugs. Would an infinite supply of drugs be of any concern if there were no demand for them? Furthermore, availability of a drug does not necessarily correlate with subsequent attempts to possess and abuse the drug. Take inhalants, for example. A can of spray paint is available for purchase in nearly every hardware store in America. Within minutes and for only a few dollars, if, for, if an individual were so inclined, they could possess a means by which, albeit illegally, to experience a temporal intoxicating euphoria. But while the plight of those addicted to inhalants should not be undermined, people are not exactly lining up outside of hardware stores in record masses to score cans of spray paint to huff. To summarize, supply will not necessarily initiate demand. Supply will be produced in direct correlation to and in response of demand. Therefore, if marijuana is a problem that is in need of fixing, we should focus on the demand for the drug. Research has shown that the intended goal of the war on drugs, which is 
to reduce availability and abuse of drugs like marijuana has been misguided in its approach and ineffective in its application. Attempts to control the supply of marijuana and punishments of individuals in possession of the drug has only resulted in an exponentially increasing prison population. This attempt to legislate morality is in need of reform.